Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name's Shadow Wraith and today I'm going to be going over three historical tactics that you can actually use in Middle Earth strategy battle game. Now by actually use I mean I have used to success so I have won using these real historical tactics. Now not all tactics can be translated to the tabletop because a lot of them take into account things like uh, fatigue of troops, so your own troops and the enemy's troops and using reserves to stand in for the tired troops and stuff like that. Or like shock and awe tactics where you you know strike hard and fast at a certain point in an enemy's battle line and it causes a rout which then spreads like wildfire and causes the army to basically rout a mass rout. Um, you can use tactics like that in Warhammer Fantasy Battle, sure. That works, but not in Middle Earth strategy battle games because all our warriors are hardcore and they don't care that their mucker's mate has just had his head chopped off. Mucker means friend, in case anyone doesn't know. But yeah, so we're going to go into the first battle tactic that I ever used and won with. It won me the game. And it is the pig's head. Awesome name, loving name, but it is quite good it is quite good now it's ideally used for like piercing into the enemy's line so which is why you've got the wedge formation going on but I don't I didn't quite use it for that it does work for that so if you can see my cursor my mouse um, you've got your tip so I, I used army of the dead for this the legendary legion and I did and they're really good because they're high defense and they're really easy at killing stuff because they attack courage now with this, because I'm an elite army, I'm probably going to be outnumbered, which is why I love this formation. So each one of these squares is not just a warrior of the dead, it's like a couple, so maybe two with two spear supports or something like that. And just imagine you've got Strider, Aragorn, here, so uh, providing all these guys up front to the uh, spear tip, his banner ability. He can be here to charge in and use his lightsaber to kill things so there is the opportunity to come forward and then start cutting into things and using heroic combats to force that wedge even deeper into the enemy's lines um, yeah so and then slightly behind him was the king of the dead providing his minus one aura of courage which obviously is basically minus one defense for the enemy when they're fighting ghosty boys um, and we're going to go with the example of what happened with my game. I was fighting a shield wall. Now, with a shield wall, it doesn't matter what it is. It can be dwarves, it can be Gondor, Minister, if whatever. Um, but it's quite good for piercing through things like that. So, say they stood here, and there's an objective behind them that you need to get to with your army. You might be outnumbered, or you know they've got opportunities that they could probably wrap around you if they wanted to. Now, instead of spreading my army out, because they do work well as a bubble here, they like all their, their 6 inch banner, the 12 inch minus 1 courage, you want to keep them together. And the other bonus to using this is, because I'm an elite force, I'm probably going to be outnumbered. And what do you do with an outnumbered foe? Well, you encircle them, you surround them. This formation denies them your flanks, because it's harder to get into. The distance from getting, you know, a guy here who would usually just pop around if the flank was if this was a straight line now has to travel all the way down here and round here to flank you. It's not going to happen. Unless they've got cavalry, it's not going to happen. And in which case I usually counter because I always like bringing a couple of horses to counter things like that to stop cavalry flanking round. So a couple of horses here and here to stop them from doing a cheeky little flank. And then you can just drive forward and forward and forward killing enemies as quickly as you can try not to get flanked it's it's ideal for elite forces in my opinion so even like Thorin's company or something crazy like that um, champions of Erebor where you've got killing power you've got defense but you haven't got numbers this is a good way to strike into the heart of the enemy force and split it into two groups even because once you get through you can either get to that objective or then turn it into two separate battles so you deny them having all their numbers in one place fighting all your numbers you can fight them in two halves it's quite handy it won me the game I managed to get to the objective break through the enemy lines and they couldn't flank me which was great now moving on we have got our next formation a funny looking one it's called oblique order 
Now, first of all, you want to get out of your head these blocks as number of troops. This is not less troops than over here or anything like that. It is strength. So this is going to be my main battle line. And I'm going to use Mordor as an example for this. Okay? So I'm playing as Mordor. Red is Mordor. Blue is whatever. Okay? Again, I'm going to use Shield Wall. Because it is so popular, I've been to quite a few events. And I think only one of the events I did not play against a Shield Wall of some kind. Whether that be Dwarves or Minas Tirith. They're really strong. Shield Walls are really strong. But, now, with this... You've got to say a shield wall, and with all these tactics, you've got to use your brain. You've got to look at their enemy, look at your enemy, and go. He's deployed in a way where I can use oblique order, and then you can deploy. Obviously, if he's like all over the place and got guys over here, guys over here, guys over here, whatever, it's not going to really work. But if he's got a main force set up together, you can use this. Okay. Now, with this, I'm going to call this the heavy flank. The heavy flank, I mean, is your strongest flank, and my heavy flank was Blackguard with uh, Orc Spear Supports, Moran and Orcs or whatever. Basically chucking in two attacks at strength 5 and the guys up front are defence 6. So it's really strong, it's really killy. But you can use it for other factions, um, even Serpent Horde, you can use it for um, the Merchant Guard with Spear Supports. Merchant Guard are awesome, they're burly with two-handed weapons and they can be poisoned so you can have the Betrayer there as well. So you're re-rolling to wounds at plus 1 to wound. It's pretty nasty. Anything super killy, super choppy like that, you want to have as your heavy flank. The rest of it can be whatever, you know, sword and board guys, supported by spears. You want to have your banner here to support this. You want to buff this section as much as uh, possible. If you've got a wraith to deny certain things or play shenanigans over here on the enemy's line to make them weaker in any way, even if it's just to like compel a banner to go off that way, Perfect. Anything to give you an advantage on this flank. And once you clash, you, you basically want to clash in a line. So you occupy this side with your main force, and then your heavy flank occupies this slide. And then, as you can see from this image, you should, if this works, chew through to the point where you break that flank. And you start wrapping around. This gives your opponent a couple of options to pick from. A. He can try and withdraw. If he withdraws, you're probably going to catch him anyway, because, you know, he's... Yeah, you might not, but you're probably going to catch up anyway. You're going to keep the pressure on, but they're going to have to go this way, up here, into this corner. And at that point, it means you control everything down of that line. You've got board control, basically, which is always good to have, always good to have, because it will force your opponent into a corner, and that's not a good place to be. His second option is to stand and fight which will not go well they will die if they do that but his third option is he can start trying to take guys off this flank or this center over to here to try and fight against this which is i can see why people would do this but it's also not great because then you weaken this flank and this flank can then start pushing through and in an ideal world that that flank will crumble as well and then you've got them encircled yeah, if they stand and fight, you just keep crunching through. And yeah, it's it's absolutely horrific when it what does work. The downside to this formation, however, is if they have cavalry. If they have cavalry, they can just smash into your flanks. So over this side, back to the start, they can just completely disrupt this side with their cavalry. So, if you bring cavalry of your own, even wild riders, you want to stick them here just to deny their cavalry. You can have a cavalry skirmish over, over here. You don't care if your cavalry dies. All you care about is if this flank dies. Once this flank dies, you can start wrapping around, and by that point, you you need two or three turns to start really killing stuff in combat, okay? And the game's either going to be won or lost there. So, really powerful, really strong, can work. And it can work with a lot of armies. Now, the last one on my list. It's uh, probably the most classic one. Anyone recognise that? No? Maybe... Says it, oh, says it there. Bull's horns, the bull's horns, probably the most universally known battle tactic, ancient battle tactic, used by the Zulus very effectively. We even still use it nowadays. It's amazing. Okay, it's really simple. Now, the army I'm going to use as an example for this is going to be my Muhad. Okay, my Far Hurrat. 
and my main attack, so your main force, is going to be something pretty solid, okay? It's got to withstand the fight. And I had half trolls, supported by Serpent Horde Spearmen, with a betrayer sat here, giving them re-roll to wound, okay? And then chucking out anything at heroes if he has to. It's always good. You can do both, so. On the flanks, I had my Muhad Raiders. If it was lower point games, they were probably... Um, Serpent Horde, you know, uh, the Haradrim Raiders with their war spears and their poison war spears, so they're re rolling to ones to wound at plus one to wound. That's scary, but ideally, you want Muhad Raiders. But anything, anything hard hitting cavalry, hard hitting cavalry, something fast and hard hitting on the flanks, and then your main attack still has to be quite considerable. You don't have to have tons of troops, you just have to have it strong enough to contend with their main force. And you can whip this bad boy out, this tactic out, if you see your enemy setting up like this. So they've got a main force, so whatever it is, I'm going to use Thrandral's Halls for an example. You've got Thrandral here, and you've got his palace guard and all that good stuff all around him, because you want to keep them together. And then on the flanks, you've got some cavalry, or, you know, archers, anything, anything on the flanks, protecting their flanks. The, your mobile force here, as as um, labelled out, their only job is to destroy those flanks. Once those flanks are destroyed, uh, you've got the game. Your main attack has to engage this. If you engage this, you're pretty sorted, because you want to tie this down into a bloody war of attrition to start off with. Doesn't matter, you don't have to start pushing through yet, you just need to engage them. Once they're engaged, your mobile force gets in, and the reason I like Muhad Raiders is because they've got the impact hit at strength 4, which can kill quite a lot of troops, especially things like elves who are quite squishy, and then you've got the war spears, which means you're plus 1 to wound at strength 4. It's They're scary, they're quite considerable. Yeah, that's it. And once your mobile force has done its main job of destroying the flanks, and you're engaged with their main force, you slip, it's simply just going to go boop, and encircle your enemy, get them right in the back. And if you've got impact hits, you could be really cheeky to hit them in the sides and try and go for like a conga line of knocking everyone over and meet in the middle. It's, it works really well, okay? If it works, it works, let's just say that. Sometimes you can't pull off any of these tactics. If your opponent deploys in a way where you can't do the bull's horns, you can always think of a different tactic, like Again, my, the reason I like my Farharad is because they can do both Oblique Order and this. So with the Oblique Order, I'd probably have all my camels as my hard-hitting force with a Muhad King or something. And then I've got my main battle line, which is still hard as nails, to you know engage their main battle line. And then hopefully my camels can hit the flanks, wrap around, start killing, and then push in this way. So that was my three tactics, historical tactics, that you can apply to Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. Now tell me what you think of these tactics. If you think they're rubbish, let me know. If you think they're good, let me know. And if you think, hey, that guy Shadow Wraith, hmm, said something interesting. You know what, I'm going to try that in my next game. And if you're lucky enough to get a game during this period, or Tabletop Simulator, or whatever, and you'd use one of these, do let me know how it goes and how you fared, because I'd love to find out. Okay. They've worked for me in the past. Doesn't mean they're going to work for everyone, but they can work. So, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And if you could do me a favour, hit the like button if you enjoyed video this video, because I will do more videos like this talking about different tactics you can apply. And they can be historical, they can be any kind of tactics, but like, you know, main battle tactic videos. And then, once you've done that, you might as well subscribe. <laughs> I'm only kidding. If you don't like the video and you don't subscribe, I still hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.